and Nancy and we're here to share a little bit of the Irish mythologies and folklore. But right now we're going to teach you a tune called Rutland Bog. And you're saying to yourself, bog. Well, the bog is kind of like a swamp, kind of murky, icky water, but in Ireland they dry up sometimes and they're called ancient bogs. And Rutland, what does Rutland mean? Rutland's uh, fun, having a good time, yeah. Snappy, snappy. Rattling Bog is a happy little swamp. So, we're going to teach you the chorus, and it'll be up to you to learn the verses. Are you ready? Okay, repeat after Mike. Ho, oh, the Rattling Bog. Ho, oh, oh, ho, the Rattling Bog. Bog down in the valley, oh. Bog down in the valley, oh. Ho, oh, oh, the Rattling Bog. Ho, oh, oh, ho, the Rattling Bog. Bog down in the valley, oh. Bog down in the valley, oh. And in that, and on that tree there was a limb. Lim. Rare limb, the Rattling Limb, a limb with a tree, tree and a oh. Hold the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. Then that limb there was a branch, a branch, rare branch, a rattling branch, branch and a limb, limb and a tree, tree and a hole. Hold the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. Then that branch there was a twig, twig. Twig, where twig, a rattling twig, twig in the branch, branch in a limb, limb in a tree, tree in a hole in the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, oh, rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh, oh, rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. And in that twig there was a nest, a nest, nest, rare nest, a rattling nest, nest in a twig, twig, twig in the branch, branch in a limb, limb in a tree, tree in a hole, hole in the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, oh, rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. Egg in the nest, nest in the twig, twig, twig in the branch, branch, branch in the limb, the limb in a tree, tree, tree in a hole, oh, hole in the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 oh rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh, oh, oh rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. Now that egg there was a bird, 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 oh, rattling bird, bird, bird in the egg, egg, egg in the nest, nest in the twig, twig in the branch, branch, branch in the limb, limb in a tree, tree in a hole, hole in the bog, bog down in the valley, oh, 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 rattling bog, bog down in the valley, oh. Nest enough. <laughs> Twig. Twig enough. You say it. Branch. Thank you. Branch and a limb. <laughs> limb and a tree. Tree. Tree and a hole. Hole in the bog. Bog down, down in the valley. Oh, oh, rat and bog. Bog down in the valley. Oh, oh, rat and bog. Bog down in the valley. Oh, 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 there was a flea. A bee, nasty flea. Gonna get tick. me. Oh, it's a tick. It's a tick tock. A tick tack cock. I'm going to eat you, my pretty. <laughs> Chicken and a feather. Feather. Feather and the bird. Bird. Bird and the egg. Egg, egg and the nest. Ha! <laughs> nest and the egg. <laughs> what? Egg and the nest. Nest and the egg. Egg. Egg and a twig. Twig. Twig and the branch. Branch. Branch and a limb. Limb. Limb and a tree. Tree, tree and a oh. Hole in the bog. Bog down in the valley. Oh, oh, oh. Rat and bog. Bog down in the valley. Oh, oh, oh. Rat and bog. Bog down in the valley. Oh. Again, yes, I am oh. Nancy, and this is my husband Mike. Oh, oh, yeah. I think you should put on a vest. Yeah, I got kind of a bump there, don't I? Oh, I mean, okay, a I'm little gonna, bump. I'm gonna put the vest on. There. So okay. we're gonna spend some time uh, teaching you Hi, and mom. sharing some Irish mythology and folklore. Now, if you're wondering, this is a drum. This is an Irish drum, actually, called a bowron, and this is my tipper, and I'm just striking it back and forth. No, I believe you turn it around. Okay. <laughs> and Mike was, uh, he was playing called what was called a bazooki. Yeah. It's used in lots of traditional Take Irish Take out nine music. banjo players with one shot. But a bum All right. So, Irish mythology. Now, the Irish have their own mythology, kind of like the Romans and the Greeks do, that you learned in school, or you will learn in school for your little ones. You know, Zeus, Hercules, Hercules, Athena. Hercules. <laughs> 
Sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. That didn't hurt. <laughs> Herky, I'm Hercules. But the Irish mythologies are not very well known outside of Ireland. So all the people of a course of Ireland know, but not us who are not born on the Emerald Isle. So there is a whole lot of information about Irish mythologies. Lots of wonderful characters and stories, and I invite you to look them up yourself. Yeah. So I'm just going to share a wee bit for the wee bit of time we have today. So the Irish mythologies, there's, they're called cycles, and there's four cycles in the historical writings. The first cycle is called the mythological cycle. And the third one would be the tricycle. <clears throat> Second one would be bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so mythological cycle. This is where we find out their creation story. Now, of course, the creation story, there's lots of cultures that have their own creation story. Of course, this is B.C., before Christ, to explain how Earth got to where it was. In Ireland, one of the legends, now, like I said, there's many legends. One of them was the Earth was filled with fire and volcanoes. It was very barren and a scary place. Well, one of these volcanoes shot up so high, it went all the way to the heaven. And it bore a little hole, and out from that hole came a drop of water. Danu. Danu is the mother goddess of Ireland. And the drop of water came and met the earth, and that's when the streams and the rivers and the mountains and the trees were formed, and the city of earth began. Well, Danu had some children, and they're called Tuar de Danin. Now, the Tuar de Danin, they roamed the earth for quite a bit of time until they were called back home to Ireland. Well, when they got there, what do you think? Somebody was already raining over the poor little Emerald Isle, and they were called the Fear Bogs. The Fear Bogs were nasty. They're smelly. They just weren't very nice. So the Tour de Danon had a battle with the Fear Bogues and won and exiled them out of Ireland. So the Tour de Danon, they reigned for quite a bit of time in Ireland until another race of people, as we'll say, came. That poor little Ireland, there's always somebody that wants to come over and, and take over, but that's another story. So these folks that came this time were called the Milesians. Now some believe that the Milesians or the Celts are what the ancestors of our Irish today. But that is another story. So the Milesians and the Tour de Dan, they came to an agreement. The Milesians would rule on this side of the earth. And the Tour de Dan would go to the underworld. To the shade of the mountains. To the glens of the forest. Way through time, the Tour de Dana became the fairies of Ireland. Now fairies, you know, well, see, <laughs> we know Tinkerbell, right? Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, they're not the Tinkerbells you think of. Now, of course, Tinkerbell was a little bit uh, cantankerous herself, didn't she? She got a little bit jealous. Well, the fairies of Ireland... You see, the people of Ireland don't talk about them much. No, no, no. The wee people, the gentry, uh, uh, the wee folk, the dinishi. They don't speak of them much, but when they do, they better speak of them nicely. Or the fairies will do something naughty. See, the fairies of Ireland are not very nice sometimes. Sometimes they steal children. And I have a wonderful poem I'd like to read to you. Written by William Butler Yeats. And this speaks of the stolen child. Now, William Butler Yeats, as you can see, he also uh, collected folklore and fairy tales of Ireland with a lady called Lady Gregory. So if you look up The Celtic Twilight by William Butler Yeats, you can find out your own mythologies and fairy tales yourselves. But this is called The Stolen Child. And I'll just read a couple of stanzas for you. Where dips the rocky highland of Sleuthwood in the lake, there lies a leafy island, where flapping herons wake the drowsy water rats. There we've hid our very vats, full of berries, full of reddest stolen cherries. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, come away, O oh, human child, to the woods and waters wild, with a fairy hand in hand, for the world's more full of weeping than you can understand. Where the wave of moonlight glosses the dim gray sands with light far off, by the farthest rosses, we foot it all the night, weaving olden dances, mingling hands and mingling glances, till the moon has taken flight. To and fro we leap and chase the frothy bubbles, while the world is full of troubles and is anxious in its sleep. Come away, O oh human child, to the woods and waters wild, with a fairy hand in hand, for the world's more full of weeping than you can understand. called Dance of the Fairy King. <sighs> All right, so we just talked about the fairies. Now, there are some fairies that are solitary. You mentioned, oh, solitary fairy like Neil Diamond. I'm a solitary fairy. That's what I am. Oh, he's a solitary da -da -da. man. That's what I am. Da -da -da. Okay, solitary fairies. So, so you so mentioned leprechauns? <laughs> oh, Mike Micam. <laughs> Solitary fairies. So what are called the puka. Now the puka is the shapeshifter. <laughs> puka, puka, puka -de -de <laughs> The puka is a shapeshifter. I don't know if you've heard other cultures talk about shapeshifters. There's some in the Native American stories. But a shapeshifter is someone that ch changes their shape. They can be a bird. Or a bear. <laughs> or a Mike. Mike. <laughs> Puka. Now there's also a banshee. That's a very sad fairy. For she appears when one is about to die of the old Irish family. And she wails a pitiful moan. The banshee. And then, <gasps> well. Then there's the leprechaun. I know what a leprechaun is. It's you a convict not. with a skin condition. <laughs> a leprechaun. They're called the Librogue. One shoe fairy. They're always working on one shoe. They're the cobbler of the trade. There you go. One there's shoe. one shoe. And that's a brogue. A brogue. Or brogan. Me. It's a shoe in Ireland. Yeah. So the Librogue, the leprechaun, has evolved to the time. You know him as a little green man who has a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But in Ireland, he's just a wee bit of an old man. And he's always working on one shoe. And he doesn't have a very good attitude. So let's have a story about the leprechaun. May, no, it was Lady Day, the finest of all holidays during harvest time. And Tom Fitzpatrick was walking on the sunny side of the hedge. When all of a sudden he kept hearing that the tapping sound. It's awful late in the season for the stone shatters to be at work. So he crept along a little bit so he could find out what that noise was and to see if he was right. So he crept along along, and then he looked down at the hedge, and there, the, at the bottom of the hedge was a little bit of an opening like a hole, and he slowly crept down. What do you think he saw? He saw a brown pitcher. You know, like a pitcher, it's usually made of pottery, and it has a handle, and it pours out liquid. He saw a brown pitcher, so he kept looking and looking, and then by and by, a teeny tiny wee bit of an old man with a dishy doshy leather apron on and a little hat cocked on his head. He was 
was pulling a stool behind him. And as he set the stool up, he climbed up on the stool and took a little pig in and dipped the full of it into that pitcher. Got down off the stool, set the pig in down, and went to work on a little bit of heel piece a robe just his size. That was tapping some of course. He kept tapping. Tom Fitzpatrick said to himself, By the powers. Ha! Oh, a leprechaun. Well, I've often heard tell of leprechauns, but I never quite believed him myself. But there's one sure. Oh, 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 he said, if I go my way knowingly, I'll be a made man. So he crept very quietly. You see, you can never take your eyes off a leprechaun, or they'll disappear as you turn away. So as a cat with a mouse, Tom slowly stooped. Stooped lower and lower until he said, God bless your work, neighbor. The little old man looked up at Tom, a little annoyed. Thank you kindly, he said. Tom says, Well, I'm wondering why you work on the holiday. That's me business and none of you. Oh, well, um, so I'm wondering what's in the brown pitcher. The little old man looked at Tom. I'll tell you what it is, young man. It'd be better for you to get along and not bothering hard-working people on such a day. See, while you're gone, the cows have got out. Mm -hmm. Your cows are out and they're knocking about your corn and they're eating all your oats. Well, Tom was a little bit taken aback and he almost turned around until he caught himself. And just so that wouldn't happen again, he reached down and caught the old man in his hand and looked at him. Now Tom had a very mean look on his, in his eye, and the little old man was a little bit feared. He looked at him. Hmm. So, I'm wondering if it isn't true what they say about you. You got a little gold stash somewhere, a little money hidden away, hmm? and you'd be telling me about it, wouldn't you? Well, like I said, Tom had a little bit of a mean look on his face. So the old man said, well, <clears throat> indeed I have. Uh, but it's a bit of a walk. It's a few fields over. Tom said, that's all right. So, while carrying the old man, never taking his eyes off of him, it was a bit of a walk. Up a couple of hills and through crooked pieces of bog here and there. You remember bogs? And down to the heather in the glen. Woo! Until they came to a field. A field full of bullions. Now, bullions... They're just weeds. Weeds, you know what weeds are. You know, like the Queen's Anne's Lace we get here in those arcs. And maybe you get it there, up there, in Kansas City. Uh, Queen Anne's Lace, it's got a stalk, tall stalk, and it opens like a fan. And it looks like lace if you look closely at it. It's a beautiful white flower. Until the summer wears on. And it shrivels into itself and creates the burrs that stick to our pant leg as we walk by and we can't get them off. Weeds, scourge of gardeners. So, there was a big field of them. And the little old man pointed to one way out in the middle. Oh yeah, I, uh, about in the middle there to the left a bit. Uh-huh, that's where me crock and kitties is stashed, he says. Tom looked, and he hadn't a thought to bring a pick or a shovel. So we got an idea, and he took one of his red garters off, and he tied it around that bullion. And he looked at the old man with that mean look again. Now, you won't be going near that red garter now, will you? Oh, I wouldn't think of it, wouldn't think of it. Wouldn't go near it. <laughs> and then at last, the little man said, Now, uh, you won't be having any more need of me, will you? See, I've got things to do, places to go. You'd let me go now, wouldn't ya? Tom looked at the old man. He said, you know what, you're right. I won't be having any more need of you. And I want to thank you kindly. Thank you so much. And best of luck to you the rest of your days. The old man looked up at Tom. Ha! Best of luck to you and yourself. And a lot of good it'll do when you get it. And Tom ran back to his farm as fast as his feet could carry him. Grabbed a pig, grabbed a shovel, and went all the way back. To the field! And when he got there, he dropped his tools and dropped his mouth a little bit. For what do you think he saw there in the field? <laughs>
Hmm, I'll give you a minute to think. What do you think he saw? I'll tell you. Every weed in that field had a little red garter tied around it. Oh, and there was no use digging up the whole field, for there was 40 good Irish acres there. Oh, Tom picked up his pick and shovel. He started walking back a little slower than he came. Oh, you know what? And wished he'd never wished good luck on that old man at all. Hmm. <laughs> The dot, dot, it's dot. a dot dot, yeah, because it's got that little like it. All right, so now we what? talked about the mythology cycle. Remember, there's four. Bicycle, cycle, tricycle. And um, let's see, we talked about, oh, I haven't talked about the Ulster cycle. Ulster. Now, we don't have much time to go through the Ulster cycle, but this is where you meet Cullen, the great warrior. This is where we meet Queen Maeve and the great cattle raid of Cooley, the Hound of Ulster. Many legends surrounding Cacullen and the Ulster cycle. So I will put it upon you to look up Irish mythologies. You can just YouTube it, look through the library. Cacullen. Then the next cycle is called the Finian cycle. This is where we meet Finn McCool. Finn McCool was a giant of a man, and there's many stories about him also. But one I'll share with you about how he built the Giant's Causeway. Well, if you've never been to Ireland, on the tippy tippy tip of Ireland, just across the sea from Scotland, there is like a path, like stones coming out of the ocean, hexagons, pillars of stones coming out. And it looks like a footpath that you walk across to Scotland on. Well, of course, Finn McCool made him. Well, you could you could say something about the volcanoes in the time, and, and it erupted, and the ocean cooled the stones before they couldn't, uh, but that's science. I wouldn't say nothing about the volcanoes, they'll just blow up. <laughs> and science is very cool, but we're not going to talk about science right now, are we? We're talking giants. Finn McCool was working at the giant's causeway with some of his relatives, and he heard a whisper on the wind across from Scotland that the great Scottish giant was on his way. Now, to see the Scottish giant, he had been looking for Finn for a long time, and Finn knew it, and he was a little, well, I wouldn't say scared, but he had no uh, wish to meet him at all. He was a big giant. Mm. So as that whisper of a wave through came to his ear, he looked at his relatives and said, you know, fellers, ha, 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 ah. Let's see, I, uh, I better get home to me Oma. Oh, I'm afraid she's missing me something terrible, and I'm, 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 I'm worried about her, and I better get along and go see about it. And off he went, back to the Hill of Allen, where he lived with his wife Oma. Not as big as the Hill of Terra, but that's another story. Went back home, opened the door, Oma! Oma looked at Finn. Finn McCool, what are you doing home so early? Uh, what? You have plenty of work to be doing at the causeway. I didn't expect you back so soon. Oh, my said. Me, oh, I was so worried that you was missing me and not getting along too well without me. And I just thought I'd better come back and, and see how you were. Oma oh, looked right through that, as most wives do. What's the matter? Oh, the Scottish giant is on his way. And I think he's found out where we lived. 
and I just don't know what to do about it. He's an awful big giant, and do you know, do you know, he caught a thunderbolt in his bare hand and smashed it into a pancake, and he has it in his pocket for anyone to see. Ooh, that's a big giant. Well, let's start thinking about that, she says. And they both started to think. And then Oma came up with a plan. This is what we'll do. Oh, I got it, she said. So she started baking big round cakes and started gathering all the griddles she had. You know, the griddles, they're, they're iron skillets. You know, do you bake iron? Do you put cornbread in it and bake it? Or you or put pancakes? Do you bake with an iron skillet? Well, she does. Anyway, she started sticking these skillets into the cakes to form around them and she baked them <laughs> right inside the cake. And then she made a cradle, mm, a little baby cradle. Finn was looking at him. He didn't know what to make of that. But then they heard the great pounding of feet coming up the hill. <gasps> Oma said and looked at Finn. Get in the cradle, put that cloth on your belly, that cloth on your forehead, and uh, act like a baby. Go. Finn did as he was told and he got into the cradle and leaned back. <laughs> he looked rather silly actually. And then Alma went to the door. And there the Scottish giant. God bless all in the house. And she said, God bless you, stranger. Come on in. So he came in and looked around. I'm looking for Finn McCool. Finn McCool. I want to have a little meeting with Finn. <laughs> well, Alma said, he's not at home, I'm afraid. He's a... Uh, uh, doing giant things. Um, oh, here's me and the baby. Oh, dear, the baby. The Scottish giant looked at that baby. Whew, that's an awful big baby, he thought to himself. Then Alma said, hey, I bet you're famished from your long trick. Here, I bake some cakes. Please, have a couple. The giant was a bit hungry, so he took the top one and took a big bite. Thunder and giblets, he said. Two teeth fell out right there on the floor. I've lost my teeth. Oh, lost. Woman, what's in that cake? Oh, look at what you've done. Woman looked at Finn. Well, I don't know. I don't understand. These are favorites of Finn. Well, his favorite meal, of course. He eats them just like that. Hmm. Well, here, take one in the middle, maybe. It's not so hard. And she gave him another cake. He took it. Thunder and goodness, he said. Two more teeth had just dropped out of his mouth. Ah, I keep eating those and I won't have another tooth in my mouth. Oh, woman, what's in those cakes? Well, I just don't understand, she said. Ah, Finn eats them all the time. So does the baby. She took one from the bottom, which didn't have a griddle, <laughs> gave it to the baby. <coughs> Yummy. The Scottish giant looked at that baby. And he looked at the cakes. He looked at the baby again. He was having second thoughts. And finally, he looked at Oma and said, you know, <laughs> Time. Look at the time. We got to get going. Oh, got an appointment somewhere. Uh, yeah, I got to get going. Uh, and you can tell Finn uh, 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 I won't be back. And uh, oh, it was so nice meeting you. And I got to get going. And he left. <laughs> well, Finn crawled out of that cradle. And him and all oh, had a big hug and a big laugh on how they fooled the Scottish giant. <laughs> Now that was a wonderful story. It was a good story. It was a good story. You tell it so scary. I am not. You got all, you got all those scary looks about you when you tell stories that are scary. That there are many more yeah. legends of Finn McCool, Talk to the but hands. we don't have time today. Talk to both hands. Talk now the fourth hands. cycle is the historical cycle, and you can look up those yourself uh -oh. also. She's talking about me and historical. Uh oh. So it's time to say fare thee well. Yeah, Until next time we meet again and hopefully it'll be in person because we miss all of you there. Fare thee well to you, my own true love. I'm going far away. I am leaving for California and though I will return again someday. So fare thee well, my own true love. When I return united we will be. It's not the leave and I'll What's my darling when I think of me? I have sailed on a Yankee sailing ship.
not believe, but I'll never rule that grieves me. But my darling, when I think of thee, it's not the leave, but I'll never rule that grieves me. But my darling, when I think of thee, huzzah! Until we meet again. Say good night or goodbye. 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 Bye.